Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Regard, I've tidied the YouTube studio for the first time in one year, um, and I think I've over-tidied it. It seems a bit seems a bit sanitary and sparse somehow. Minimalist, but in that sort of 70... I don't know, it's not, it's not really doing it for me yet. So I'll, I'll have to... Maybe put my DJ decks there or something. What do you think? Is that a good idea? Look, use the comment section to suggest how to make this in more enlivened. Maybe I'll bring bring David a bit closer because he seems to be just hiding in the corner with his hands on his uh, through the belt loops of his jeans. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to be um, talking about the Lemon Twigs today. Uh, there's a song called My Golden Years that came out on the 2nd of January. Justin Hawkins writes again, again, yes. Right, I've covered the Lemon Twigs before and I really, really enjoyed it. They're a band who I think are incredibly talented. And there's brothers in them, isn't there? I, I don't know, I'll probably have to read the the bio at some point and um, they've just released a new song called my golden years and i'm going to see if they're still as good as i previously thought the band consists of brothers i was all right brian and michael Dadario. i thought Dadario. they make um they don't make guitar accessories like you know straps and plectrums and whatnot um probably not related to, it might be related to the Dadario straps and plectrums and whatnot family imagine Having your fingers in that empire. Anyway, are the lemon twigs a little bit too pastiche in their nature that it borders on parody? Many bands get criticised for sounding like everything before. So what's good about uh, what's so what's so good about the lemon twigs that they can take such heavy influence and get away with it? Um, or do they get away with it? Is it that the music that they take influence from is just better than like the usual rock tropes that you see indie bands stealing from? Um, or is this kind of music more difficult to imitate? you know, in an accurate way. Um, <clears throat> remember those um, Brazilian, those lovely Brazilian boys, um, the Banda AL9. <laughs> what is it that makes the Lemon Twigs better than them? I mean, I, I think there's some sort of association between the Lemon Twigs and Todd Rundgren, which gives them, you know, a bit of clout, I suppose. Um, I'm going to watch this video and tell you what I think of it. I already know I'm going to love it because I think I'm a, oh, I'm a Lemon Twigs fan. Sorry, guys. This won't be impartial. Okay. And I love their videos as well. Right, let's have a look at that first chord. Yeah, there's something really beautiful in his voice, isn't there? It's got the timbre of his sort of soft, gentle verse singing. Puts me in mind of a young Tom York from the Radioheads, but, you know, without the weirdness, which I love, by the way. Um, but he's doing that thing of holding his guitar and doing the uh, the, the John Lennon um, it's kind of frog dance. It's like this. Well, yeah, I didn't see him doing that on the previous video that I covered. Um, it was more sort of weird in the desert, wasn't it, with a, uh, some sort of concept car, and they were wearing a lot of um, satin, I think. Years, I always associate uh, Rickenbackers with that sort of jangly sound. Um, he's, he's playing the sixth string there, but it sounds like, sounds like there's a 12 string involved. One of, yeah, I can see a Rickenbacker 12 string just over there next to the drum set. <laughs> How foolish of me. I've paused it at 0 0.37 and everything that you need to know is in that picture. Two Rickenbackers. One of them is a 12 string, one's a 6 string. Um, and over there is one of those sort of teardrop voxy kind of um, bass guitars that, what's his name, that Sir Paul McCartney might have played in the olden days. Eh? Now, here they are walking past um, what looks like a, a, a formal wear. Uh, boutique less formal in the other window because some of the uh, models uh, mannequins rather are wearing sunglasses um, but it might be a different shop altogether I think this puts me in mind of uh, a book that Tony Hatch wrote about how to make it in the music industry in the 60s and he suggested that bands should all wear the same suit and have the same haircut 
and then you've, you're guaranteed success. I might be paraphrasing or just misremembering it. Who knows? I hope they all wear the same suit. You know, I'm getting a monkey's vibe off this as well. Oh, and then there's the Beach Boys bit. <laughs> you know, they're really covering all the bases for 60s jangly uh, guitar and harmonies pop music. Oh my God, this is what I was talking about. Even if it's just for a pre-chorus or this other section here, it just makes you happy. And makes you want to join in, makes you want to dance. Um, it is, I don't know, I suppose you could, you could have to call it a production trick nowadays. Um, but in the olden days, it really was just a jubilant form of expression that um, was absolutely infectious. The whole audiences would be like, <laughs> in between screaming and crying. See, I think this is... <clears throat> Quality songwriting. I mean, that's, there's so many different beautiful sections in it. Um, and it's really, really well arranged and observed. I think perhaps what sets this apart from those lovely Brazilian boys, lovely boys, um, is that there's, you know, I think, if I recall correctly, the AL9 thing was, Banda AL9 had a, a more sort of cyclical approach to the composition. And this is just a totally different type of journey and much more involved. What could I do if I this, this bit here has sort of reminded me a bit of Big Star. You know, it's all my favourite stuff all rolled into one. What's not to love? The lemon twigs are brilliant. And that's just the reality. See, this is more like the kind of singing that I was hearing on that other record. Um... He really shreds his voice, um, but th th there's, something's changed in their approach. Because that record that I was listening to, it had so much space in it. Um, it was more about what they weren't playing. And this is kind of like full-on 60s beat music, which is why I'm wearing this. Um, actually, it's not. It's just because it's cold here. <laughs> I live in Switzerland. <laughs> Give me a break, guys. <laughs> Nice to hear the bass going off in a little wander there as well. There's little that gap where after the after the one. What does that remind me of? Show me how you do that tree, the one that makes me scream. She's the one that makes me love you so, and she threw her arms around my head. The cure. What's that called? Something about heaven, was it? I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely got a bit of curiness, that heaven one, whatever it's called. Use the comment section to remind me because <laughs> it's just completely slipped. It was on the tip of my tongue, but it slipped my mind. Right, yeah, that's it. The uh, Why is there a capo on there? Oh, yeah, because I was figuring it out. Doesn't matter. Didn't bother in the end. It didn't need to. It's really sort of lavish in, in a playful way. It's kind of like um, Supergrass, but without the punk. Um, it's a, it's a mashup of Big Star, Beatles, Beach Boys. The three Bs. Hmm. The three Bs. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I think when it's done that well, it doesn't matter how derivative it is or, you know, how they clearly revere those amazing artists. And who doesn't? But to be able to actually play it with that much in that much of an accomplished way is really, really impressive, and I, I've loved it. Lemon Twigs are ace. I can't wait to see them live. Justin Hawkins writes again. Let me know what you think, guys, in the comments. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, join the mailing list, and uh, follow the link in the description to find the last few remaining tickets for live Justin Hawkins rides again. For the first time, uh, if there are any tickets left, who knows? Um, it's all going really, really well. Happy 2024, and I'll see you on the ice. Nice one, guys. <laughs> see you later. Okay.